Hello, and welcome to the Beginner Guide to One Piece, Episode 11. Nami's first ever appearance was in Manga Chapter 8. However, in the anime, Nami was introduced in filler in Episode 1. However, she was then reintroduced in Episode 4 and 5 in the same way she was introduced in the manga. It was stated by Oda that if Nami was a real person, her nationality would be Swedish. Nami was born in the East Blue. One of the concept arts for Nami showed her having a robotic arm and leg and wielding a giant battle axe and having multiple scars all over her body. However, for unknown reasons, this idea was scrapped for the design she was introduced with. Oda modeled Nami after a character named Silk that he had used in his pilot for the One Piece series, Romance Dawn. Besides the Straw Hat Pirate, Nami had been a member of three other pirate crews. The Arlong Pirate, the Ganzak Pirate, and the Golden Lion Pirate. It was revealed by Oda that Nami gets a total of 8 hours of sleep every day. Now that we're done with some interesting facts about Nami, let's go into her history. Nami was an orphan found by Belmere, a female marine on a battlefield. The marine adopted her along with Nojiko, a child who was also with Nami. The three of them became a real family eventually as time passed. As a child, Nami developed a love for drawing maps and navigation and she had a dream. That dream was to draw a map of the world, a complete one. However, Belmere Tangerine Tree provided only a small amount for the family. In other words, they didn't make a lot of money. And they weren't able to afford anything other than the necessity. As a result, Nami could not afford any books about navigation, leading her to often steal them from the village bookshop. One day, Belmere scolded Nami when she got caught stealing. However, she applauded at Nami's first drawing of the island as the first step to complete her dream and put faith into Nami that she really could do it. At one point in time, the price of Chandarine fell due to a large amount of them being grown and sold. Belmere that therefore had to only eat Tangerine and gave the food to Nami and Nojiko, her sister. But she did not let on about how bad the situation was. One day, Nami was given one of Nojiko's dresses by Belmere, who simply turned the sunflower on it into a lion. Nami was offended by this because she wanted her own clothes and not Nojiko's hand-me-down. This ensued in an argument between her and Nojiko. During the argument, Nami said that she did not consider Nojiko a real sister. Ouch, that gotta hurt. Nice one, Nami. <laughs> Causing Belmere to slap her, and Nami then proceeded to run away, saying that she wished she was adopted by rich, rich people I cannot speak today. Belmere was greatly touched, and she decided to spare some money and prepare Nami's favorite meal, even though it would break her budget. She sent Nojiko to fetch Nami while she prepared prepared the meal. Just at this very moment, the infamous fifth man, pirate Arlog, who took over the Kogami Island, came upon Kogashi Village, the village Nami and her sister lived in, along with their mother, Belmere, and imposed a fee on every single adult and child in the village, in order to quote-unquote live. Since Belmere could not pay for her entire family's monthly fee, she would use as an example by Arlon to demonstrate to the town people what will happen if they ever go against him or fail to pay the fee. Belamir was great was brute was then brutally murdered by Arlon in front of Nami and Yojiko. So yeah, Arlon kind of a dick. Well you know what? He's actually even more of a dick. Because he is a dick, Arlon then kidnapped Nami and forced her to become a carpenter after he noticed the quality of her maps at such a young age. However, 
Because apparently he's less of a dick than we all think he is at this point. He struck a deal with Nami. If she brought him 100 million berries, he would free her village. Before her death, Belmir told Nami and Yojiko to be strong and that if you can survive, then happy times, lots of them, will come your way. This encouraged Nami to work very hard to buy her villa back from Arlong, believing that once she freed the village, she could pursue her dream and find happiness. At the beginning of the theory, Nami had spent eight whole years making maps for Arlong and stealing treasure from pirates in order to buy her village back. This continued until the day she met the pirate, Monkey D. Luffy. During her time working for Arlong, she managed to steal a map of the Grand Line, then laid a drift at sea with an empty treasure chest. She used this treasure chest to trick some pirates and took their boat and their treasure in instead. She was first shown, ignoring the filler from anime episodes 1, 2, and 3, running from Buggy's henchmen when Luffy fell out of the sky after being eaten by a bird. But that's a story for another day. Luffy had murdered from the smoke, completely unharmed due to his Gumbu Gumbu no Mi abilities, or the abilities that he had gotten from his gum gum fruit. Nomaly suddenly got the uh, bright idea to call Luffy Boss, asking him to take, to take care of the pirate. The pirate crowded, the pirate crowded around Luffy, and one of them hit him on the head, knocking off the straw hat. Which is really retarded. If you know anything about Luffy, you know you don't fuck with the straw hat. This goddamn idiot did. This made Luffy furious, and he easily defeated all three of them with nothing but his bare hand. This obviously impressed Nami, considering this guy had just defeated three fully grown armed men with his bare hands. So she goes, she then proceeded to introduce herself as a thief who specialized in stealing from pirates. At first, Nami tried to form a partnership with Luffy, but then Luffy asked her to join his crew and revealed that it was a crew of pirates. Once he had revealed that he was a pirate, she turned Luffy into Buggy and pretended he was her former boss. She tied up Luffy and gave him to Buggy, who locked him in a cage. Later, Nami pretended to join Buggy crew so she could steal his gold. This worked well until Buggy ordered her to kill Luffy to prove her loyalty to him. Nami's conscience got the better of her, and she decided to stay Luffy. Luffy. Fortunately, Rowan Zoro, the swordsman and debatably vice captain of the Straw Hat Pirate, showed up in time to save them both and fought off Buggy. Zoro then proceeded to cut Buggy into pieces, but he was e too easily defeated. When he turned around, he saw that Buggy's hand had managed to detach itself, stabbing Zoro in the midsection. Buggy then revealed that he had eaten the Barabara no Mi, or the Chop Chop Fruit, a devil fruit, giving him the power to detach his body part, rendering him invulnerable to sharp objects such as swords. However, the three of them managed to escape Buggy, by firing Buggy Cannon at Buggy and his crew. After overcoming many challenges, Luffy and Nami defeat Buggy. After defeating him with a Gumu Gumu no Bazooka, while Nami had tied up his limbs, Nami gives Luffy the map of the Grand Line as she thanked him, and agreed to partner up with him for the time being. They continued to go on adventure together, as they recruited members of the Straw Hat Pirates Usopp and Sanji, and now we arrive at the Arlon Park arc. During Zoro's fight with Dracula Mihawk during the Barate arc, Nami stole their pirate ship, the Going Merry, so she could return to Kagarashi Villa with the treasure she had gathered so far. While sailing to Kagarashi Village, she was shown crying at the thought of leaving her newly found friends, Luffy, Usopp, Zoro, and Sanji behind. When they realize Nami had stolen the Going Merry, they have a conversation about what they're going to do next. Luffy automatically tells everybody this exact thing. I only want Nami as my navigator. 
This is Ludwig way of showing that once he makes up his mind, he refuses it to change it. He wants Nami to be his navigator, so therefore he's going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. So, they decide to follow Nami. When they arrive on the island, they encounter Nami, who tried to convince them to leave by telling them she wants nothing to do with them, and even goes this far to insult Luffy's dream, knowing that it would be take a lot to make Luffy give up once he made up his mind, saying, telling him to go look for his stupid One Piece or whatever the hell he wants to do. Which honestly is meant to insult his dream. Luffy then responds with, I don't care. And then the Arlong Park arc takes place. For the majority of the arc, Luffy is either taking walks or napping, but he has no interest in helping somebody who does not want help, and he has no interest in somebody's past. However, after Arlong breaks their deal, and takes all of Nami's money for himself and tells her to start all over again, and the people of Kogarashi Village decide to say fuck it and try to fight Arlong, even though a fifth man is ten times stronger than your average human, Nami proceeds to break down in the middle of the road and begin to stab the tattoo that Arlong gave her when she joined the Arlong Pirates. However, Luffy proceeds to stop her and grab the knife and just pretty much let her rant. She tells Luffy to leave multiple times, and actually begs him to leave. However, Luffy refuses. He literally just stands there and pretty much responds with, Okay, whatever, and I want to be here the entire time. However, eventually Nami gets in and asks Luffy for help. Luffy then proceeds to put his hat on Nami's head, and walks away and yells, Of course I will, into the air, and unveils the fact that he is very angry. He then proceeds to go and defeat Arlong, while Zoro, Sanji, and Usa defeat the other three strongest members of the Arlong Pirates. After Luffy defeats Arlong, he, he escapes from the rubble of the building and yells to Nami, Nami, you will always be my friend. After the battle, they have a big party, and Nami goes to see the village doctor and have her remove Arlong's tattoo. However, there was a permanent scar. So Nami chooses to have a ta- to have a tattoo replaced it. This tattoo is of a tangerine and a pinwheel, representing Genzo's pinwheel and the tangerine trees of her mother. Now, Nami then proceeds to pack up her thing and say goodbye to her house one last time. When the Straw Hats are, had to depart from Kogarashi Village, Nami is not there. Ha- assuming that she had decided to stay in her hometown and did not want to go with them, they set sail. However, right when they're about to get out of the distance of the island, Nami is seen running past the people of her village and jumps onto the Going Mary. When she lands on the Going Mary, she proceeds to pull up her shirt and uh, many wallets and personal possessions that are worth a lot of money fall out of her shirt, revealing that she had stolen people's money. This is when Nami became an official member of the Straw Hat Pirates. In the Alabaster arc, Nami was given a weapon by Usopp to help her improve herself in battle. This weapon is called the Climb Attack. They can use it to create weather-based attack thanks to her knowledge of the weather. The climb attack gives Nami a variety of abilities, but the most popular ones and the ones she uses the most are the Mirage Tempo and the Thunderbolt Tempo. It can also produce heat at heat balls and cool balls that will change the temperature around her. She also has her Thunder Lance and Gust Door technique, as well as her Milky Road, Heat Egg, Thunder Breed Tempo, and her shower tempo. However, the climb attack can do much more than this. These are just a few examples of the ability she uses in combat. Though she is not a combat fighter, and mainly fits to her role as a navigator, and allow people such as Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji, the, all who are all members of the monster trio, to do the fighting. While she was on the ship, Vivi stated herself that Nami's navigational abilities 
are unparalleled and abnormal due to the fact that Nami can predict weather in the grand line without any assistance from a type of technology or or any Delafruit. She can just naturally do it. There are many theories as to how this works, but that is for another video. Not including her fight with father and background characters, Nami's two major fights in the series are her fight with Miss Doublefinger of Baroque Works and Khalifa CP9, which she both defeated after a long, very difficult battle, usually involving an extreme amount of fan service as well. And guys, that is all. I hope you enjoyed episode 11 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And remember to come back next week for episode 12 of the Beginner Guide to One Piece, The History of Usopp.